Hello everyone, this is Kono, and thank you for tuning in for another TF2 commentary. I am continuing my quest to master the arcing weapons of TF2, and I'm tackling a class that I don't normally play. It is probably my worst class, but right now, it is my most favorite class, and that is the Pyro. Now, I don't only want to talk about arcing weapons for the Pyro, because, it, you know, especially when you're using the Degreaser plus the Flare Gun, it's not just about the arcing weapons, it's about the air blasting as well. So I'll talk about air blasting later on, but I do want to cover the arcing weapons for the Pyro. Now, the Pyro has four arcing weapons. He has the regular Flare Gun, the Detonator, the Mad Melter, and the Scorch Shot. Now, my favorite, personally my favorite, is the, the standard Flare Gun. And it's mainly because it has an attribute that takes advantage of people on fire. What's really funny though is that this attribute, the special perk that you get, is not actually advertised on the, you know, in, the, in your backpack when you hover over the weapon. It's not advertised there, so it's kind of weird. And it's that you get critical hits on already burning players. It's kind of a weird little attribute, but it is super powerful, especially when you pair it with a degreaser. Now the reason why I like the flare gun so much, the regular flare gun, is because it doesn't seem to have any downsides to it. It seems to be kind of the base flare gun and all the other flare guns or all the other arcing weapons like the detonator and scorch shot and man melter, they're all somewhat variants of this and to me those other ones are kind of downgrades. For example, the detonator it's not all that great because you don't get that critical shot so even though you can actually hit people probably more often with the detonator you don't get that critical hit and I kinda like going for swag stuff like that now the man melter is one of those weapons that I just don't understand and I'm not really sure how to use very effectively because I, I, know, I understand that it's supposed to go with the phlogistonator because the flog can't air blast and the man melter you can use it to get critical shots when you extinguish your friendly players so I understand that you can do that but what really confuses me and what really makes me not like this weapon is the fact that there's no reloading animation if you fire the flog and you're waiting for it to reload because it's kind of like a futuristic weapon and it's like a laser weapon by the way it's a laser that arcs I still don't get that <laughs> But when you're waiting for it to reload for your next shot, there's no visual cue that allows you to prepare your next shot. So you kind of don't really know when it's coming. You just kind of have to practice with it and understand the timing. Whereas all the other flare guns, at least there's some reload animation that gives a cue as to when you can fire your next shot. Also, it's kind of like the Frontier Justice with me personally, where I freak out when I have stored crits. I don't know, it's just for me, every time I had stored crits for any weapon, I get nervous and I panic and I end up missing those shots, so, you know, it's just, it's just the, the Man Melter doesn't really work for me. Now, the Scorch Shot is one of those weapons where I thought it was going to be kind of cool, but it has a 50% damage penalty, and to me, that's not quite worth it for the knockback. I've noticed that even though it's a little easier to hit people, and it seems like all these knockback weapons, they have, like, bigger projectiles, and it just feels like it's easier to hit people with it. Still, the damage penalty I don't think is worth it, and the knockback is not that great. Now, I would say that the arcing on all of these weapons is about the same. Oh, by the way, here. <laughs> this is a really cool spot. My brother actually told me about this. This is on Barn Blitz on defense, right outside the gate. You can stand here on this side of the fence and actually shoot stuff all the way through. I was just there for like five minutes just spamming flares and every time I lit someone on fire they just rushed back in actually got a kill there so it's kind of a neat spot. I don't think that spot was actually intended so maybe I don't know. It's a neat, I can actually spam Huntsman through that too so it's kind of cool. But yeah like I said the arcing on all these weapons seems about the same so it's pretty easy to switch between them. Now all these weapons can actually be used at range, which is kind of nice because the Pyro is mainly known as a close quarters combat type of a, you know, a class. And if you, you know, if you have the shotgun, you're still kind of close quarters, but at least the flare gun, any sort of flare gun, any sort of arcing weapon, gives you the ability to deal some damage, a decent amount of damage too, especially if you light them on fire, at a distance. Now whenever I get killed by a Pyro with their flamethrower, all I'm thinking is, I just got W plus M1 for shame. <laughs> nah, nah. Um, if you guys don't know what W plus M1 is, it's basically a pyro that just rushes in there, you know, with their flamethrower, lights everyone on fire, and gets kills. And even though this is a very, very, seems like a very simple way to play pyro, because there's not that many keys you have to press, it still can be very effective. 
Now, this sort of game style is a little boring for me. I like to have a lot of things happening and, you know, try out really cool things. And so, I like to do a little bit different combo. Mine is like W plus M1 plus M2 plus Q plus M1. And if the person is still alive, 3 plus M1 plus M1 plus M1. <laughs> now, if you don't want to solve for that equation, Basically what that means is that I go in there, light them on fire, air blast them a little bit so it's easier to follow up with the flare gun shot, that 90 damage. And just in case that 90 damage doesn't, you know, finish them off, I always have the extinguisher as backup. Now I mentioned the air blasting making the flare shot a lot easier and it does this in two ways. One, it makes the other person panic. When you're on fire and you get air blasted, you can't really do anything because you kind of lose where you are. It's really hard to, you know, counter that pyro, so you'll survive a little bit longer. Also, when you air blast them, it puts them at a good level for the flare gun shot follow-up. In fact, you don't have to do that much vertical adjustment, I've noticed. So, you just light them on fire, air blast them, switch to your flare gun, not much vertical adjustment, and you can get that flare shot and that 90 damage. Now speaking of air blasting, I think I just found my new favorite thing to do in TF2 and that's air blasting rockets right back at them. It's so much fun. Now the demo man's pipe bombs and stuff can be reflected backwards but it's a little trickier to do because they arc and they're tougher to see. You know, they don't have that big trail of smoke behind them. But the default rocket from a soldier is actually pretty easy to see and they travel pretty slowly so you can actually reflect them on reaction. Now something like the direct hit is something that I still don't really know how to reflect because those things travel so fast that it's hard to react to them. You, you kind of have to go on anticipation rather than reaction. But you can actually go into some training map or whatever, or just go on a server and look for soldiers and kind of stand in front of them. Like, just dare them to fire at you because you know you can always reflect them back. What's also neat is that these reflections are mini crits, so they actually do more damage than, you know, the rocket that's traveling towards you. So you might as well reflect it and hopefully you might not get the soldier, but you might get someone else that's nearby. Now, air blasting is also great for defending sentry positions, level 3 sentries. Now, level 3 sentries are really important for a really solid defense, but they can't really stand up by themselves because if you just leave an engineer alone with a sentry, it's gonna go down eventually to demos, to soldiers, or whatever. So it's really good to, you know, play some support when you're playing Pyro. Watch out for your sentries, especially spies as well, but also direct attacks from things like rockets. Now, right here is actually a really good example of the short circuit in action. Unfortunately, this guy was short circuiting everything that I couldn't reflect. I was like trying to go for reflections and I was like, come on NG, let me reflect something. You're destroying them all in the air before I can reflect it. But yeah, reflecting stuff that's being fired at your sentries can be a huge help to your engineer and I'm sure your engineer is gonna be so grateful that you do that. And also here, by the way, I mistime it. Oh my gosh. You just hate it when you see a crit come at you and you mistime it. There is no way, there's no way to get out of that because uh, you miss, you're screwed. You can also reflect level 3 sentry rockets right back at them, so it's kind of cool. Here, you know, there's a level 3 sentry in there. I actually managed to reflect the rockets and actually kill that sentry. Now, I was pretty lucky there. It's not something that's really easy to do because you have to sort of draw the fire, draw, draw some fire from the sentry gun, and the sentry gun will not shoot rockets first. It will shoot its, you know, its, its bullets first. So you're going to have to take some damage before the sentry gun fires rockets that you can actually reflect. But once you do that, oh, it's so satisfying to send those rockets right back at the sentry. Now, besides reflecting stuff right back at the enemy, it's also kind of cool to use the air blasting to sort of control the engagement when you meet up with enemies close quarters. Now, what I mean by that is that you can actually use the air blasting to get people off of you and away from you if you feel that you cannot win the fight. And there's a lot of times where I'm a pyro and I just feel like there's too many people around, I'm alone, I can't take these guys on, and I need to control them, I need to make them go back. And so I use the air blasting to my advantage to try and get them back and make sure that I don't fight in something that I know I'm going to lose. Now this type of style of playing, I, I really like this for Pyro, at least for me, because I like to be on the front line, kind of in your face kind of person. You know, so I don't really like to ambush people, I guess. Like, I know there's a lot of people who out there who are W plus M1 Pyros, but they're really good at it. They're really good at flanking people and coming out of nowhere and getting so many kills. By the way, I couldn't believe I killed that spy so late. He, he got two kills before I got him. 
But yeah, I, I kind of want to learn other ways of playing uh, Pyro too, because even though this is very fun to play frontline like this, I know that W plus M1, you really get to understand the maps and understand when to go in and when to ambush. And I think that's kind of fun as well. Now, my question for you guys is, what is your favorite pyro loadout? What kind of pyro do you like to play? Do you like to play all these switching up weapon stuff, or W plus M1, or perhaps another type of pyro? Let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and have a nice day.